It's the weekend, and that means we got new metal albums to listen to. I'm bringing you my top five, the biggest news of the week, and the best album art this week. Welcome, metalheads. I'm the host of Heavy Metal Philosophy and writer for Metal Digest, John Barbus. Like I said, we got new metal albums to listen to. Before I get into the top five, let's break down some of the big releases that we had this week, and then we'll start the countdown. This week we got a new album from Hocken. The name of the album is Fauna. For all of you prog rock fans out there, this is one that you have to get very heavily animal themed on this one. I really enjoyed it, check it out. We also got a new record from Enslaved called Heimdall. I got the distinct privilege to listen to this one early. My written review is already published on Metal Digest. Links in the description to all of my writings. But this is some progressive black metal that absolutely blew me away. You have to get it. Speaking of blew me away, one of my favorite new death metal bands, Entheos, has their new album, Time Will Take Us All. It is also prog, but this time it's death metal, progressive death metal. This is amazing. This is like if music nerds that really love strong technique, both instrumentally and vocally, also want to be super brutal. Yeah. And then lastly, before we get to the top five, we had a split from Primitive Man and Full of Hell called Suffocating Hallucination. And this is one of the strangest albums I've ever listened to. I'm not going to say it's my favorite because it's so noisy, it's so unsettling, but I'm real glad I listened to it because I haven't had many experiences like that. Also wrote a written review for that one. It is in the description. Now let's do the top five. Coming in at number five, we've got Baron Air, and I love that band name. The title is Died Down, text on the screen, links to their band camp as always is in the description. This is like sludgy doom with psychedelic lead guitar and a disgusting groove. I love it, you'll love it, check it out. Coming in at number four, we've got Monolith, We've Caught the Sun. This is listed as thrash metal, but sometimes it really reminds me of In Flames style melodic death metal, but it's very thrashy, so I guess the thrash metal title is apt. But just keep in mind that mellow death sensibility is in there. Really cool and unique. Check it out. And speaking of thrash, we've got another thrash metal band coming in at number three. The name of the band is Transgressive. The name of the album is Extreme Transgression. I love this one. This is some of the most pissed off thrash metal that I've heard in a long time. It's got a real punk rock attitude to it, but it's got all those great trad metal harmonies on guitar, and you can actually hear the bass. Shout out to thrash metal albums where you can hear the bass. Coming in at number two, we've got Altar of Eye. The name of the album is Human Resources, and this is melodic death metal. It's got a bit of metalcore influences in it that I can hear, but what I really love about this one is my complaint about the melodic death genre is a lot of times those mellow death bands forget about the death metal. These dudes did not forget about the death metal. They bring the brutality. I love it. Check it out. And hey, before we do number one and the album art of the week afterwards and this week's news, I just want to say if you love metal the way that I love metal, you're in the right place. You should be subscribed and a part of this community. And if you got any enjoyment out of any of these bands, hit that like button. It helps me. It helps the bands. It spreads the words all for the love of metal. Now let's do number one. Coming in at number one. This month is starting strong. This is a strong contender for album of the month for me. Witch Ripper, The Flight After the Fall. I once again got the privilege of getting this one early and I was completely blown away. This is one of the most unique and yet familiar sounding records I've ever heard. I wrote that written review for Metal Digest. You can read it there, but basically it's like if Mastodon was less weird, it had the bombast of Queen, it had the groove and the timbre of Muse, and the occasional quirky melody and pop of Weezer. This is a strange, progressive, sludgy, prog rock space opera. It's hard to explain. You have to hear it for yourself. Absolutely incredible album. 
Mm. This was one of the most stacked weekends I've ever been a part of. I'm glad you're here with me. Now let's do the album art of the week. For this week's album cover of the week, I pick Scrying Mirror with Omni Malevolence. I love this album art, the simple black and red, the female form, and I can't really tell which direction she's looking. It's making me curious, staring over the cliffside. And then on top of that, there is some outstanding industrial death metal on this album. I would definitely buy this if I saw it in a record store, and you should too. Now let's go to the news. This week, I saw two headlines with the band Monuments and Merch Cuts. I just saw a headline and read the article where they just got hit with a 47% merch cut at a venue in Italy, which is outrageous. And they just refused to sell merch at a gig in Greece. So if they were willing to accept 47%, how high was that cut in Greece? That is absolutely shameful. Now, I've lamented the state of the venues in my local area. I understand that venues are struggling and they're looking for more revenue sources, but this ain't it. This is absolutely unacceptable. You've got bands telling the people to meet them after the show and they're selling merch out of their vans because of the tax that the venue is putting on merch. We cannot accept this. Not only do the bands, like the Monuments, need to be saying, no, we're not gonna do this, but also us fans. If we find out a venue is doing a merch cut, we need to raise a stink about it. This is unacceptable. Now, maybe there's another method we could do. You know, I understand the venue is giving up real estate for the merch booth, so maybe they can charge a small, and I mean small, flat fee for the booth as if it was like a temporary um, flea market or something, you know, but charging them for a percentage, that's unacceptable, especially 47%. That's way too much with inflation and gas prices. And now merch cuts, it's making it where bands can't make any money touring. And we all know they don't make any money selling the albums. So what recourse does that leave them with? We have to do something about this because we need the bands to make a small amount of money or else they're not going to do it. No band will be able to tour without major label support. We cannot have that. Hey, and before we close, let me know what you think. Did you enjoy any of these bands? Did you enjoy this week's album art? What do you think about monuments and other bands with these merch cuts? Have you experienced anything like this? And let me know if there's a way we can find out before we buy tickets if the venue is charging for a merch cut. I want to know. Let's share it with everybody in the community. Thank you so much. But most importantly, read philosophy, listen to metal. I love you.